Um, so the Chinese language services industry was uh, kicked up or um, starting to develop with China's opening up policy in the 1980s and have been growing with the, the development with the deepening of this opening up policy. And actually, the first uh, translation company was uh, established in 1979. It's the China uh, Translation and Publishing Corporation. And uh, actually, in this report, we have uh, listed three stages of development. Uh, basically, uh, in, in the 1980s, uh, it's the primitive uh, stage or the emergent stage where uh, there are less than 1,000 registered companies who claim they will provide language services. Uh, so this is, the, uh, this is the first stage when the language service companies started to appear, but uh, they are not, there are not many. And then, in the 1990s, as a result of uh, uh, service outsourcing, global service outsourcing, and uh, also localization, there is a surge of the number of companies. And uh, it's around, um, I'm not good at figures, <laughs> actually it's around less than 10,000. Companies, uh, close to 10,000 companies have been, have been registered. Those are not all um, language services companies. Some of them are, for example, uh, tourist companies or companies that provide um, services to help people to go abroad to study or payment companies. But they have all listed translation, localization, or uh, translation training in their uh, scope of business. So this, this is a somewhat an exaggerated number. And the third stage is after 2000, uh, after 2000, and with China's entry into WTO, and uh, then the Beijing Olympic Games, and then the Shanghai Expo, World Expo, and uh, the number of companies registered uh, came to 37,000, as I had um, mentioned in the morning. So there's a big uh, development. And uh, the second statement that we made is the language service, services in our industry as a primary infrastructure, which supports almost all other industries. So we're seeing that actually language services is part of the infrastructure. So it has uh, uh, emerged into every activity. So um, in 2008, when we hosted the uh, Faith World Congress in Shanghai, we made a video, and we have left the video here. I'm not sure if you will find a chance to play it. It's called, it's called If Translators Were Not There. So, just imagine if there is one day without translators, what were happen in the world? So translation, translation is, is indispensable uh, to almost every business now. It is globalized the world. And the third statement is that uh, China's language services industry has reached a scale direct uh, So that's the numbers. Um, <coughs> so we searched in the data of the uh, administration and uh, there are 37,000 companies who listed translation and uh, like localization and uh, containing in the business scope. And uh, uh, actually I, I did a uh, uh, search again among the databases and I used the word translator, translation E in the name of the translation companies and the figure is uh, 3,000 uh, 3, 
1,181. So there are 3,181 companies that actually has translation in their company name. Uh, but actually, a lot of companies, they do not use uh, translation in their name. So they use information technology, and uh, we have a lot of uh, very uh, well-established members, and they are very large companies. They do not use translation in their members. So this is uh, just for reference. So, uh, so from the numbers, we can see that the number service, service industry has actually grown to a, a scale. And so it should be recognized as an industry. And uh, fourthly, we made a bold prediction and uh, said the based on previous uh, growth rate and uh, and the Chinese uh, market for translation, or demand for translation, we predict that the language services market in China will grow by an annual rate of 15% in the next four to five years. And we give some reasons why we, we, we made this uh, statement. And uh, the fourth part of this uh, report is uh, detailed figures. Um, so we have four aspects. The first is the types of companies. Uh, I just picked a few of them uh, that I think may be of interest to you. So for companies with investment from Hong Kong account in Taiwan uh, accounts for 0.5% of the total companies. And companies with investment from foreign countries accounts for 1.9%. It used to be 14% in 
parts of China. So you can see in the north part of China, the accounts for 37 percent. In the east, it's 34, but on the uh, on the northeast part and southwest. Sorry, it's not northeast. Northwest. Um, the northwest part is only three percent, and the southwest is only four percent. And then uh, there is the figure of the growth of dying out rates. So we have the year when the company is registered and the year when it uh, went out of business. So the average growth rate between 2000 and uh, the year is 80.5%. <clears throat> and uh, we find that uh, most companies die uh, within one to six years after their uh, establishment. And uh, the third year is a critical period. So a large proportion of companies uh, that die did so in the third year. So if you can survive three years, your chances of uh, continuing your business is higher. And then we have the employees. <coughs> this part of the data is comes from the survey because the uh, administration data doesn't cover this part. We have uh, calculated this based on the one of the four companies. So it's uh, uh, an estimation. So we estimate that um, translate, professional translators and interpreters accounts for 55, uh, 53 percent of the total employees in the number six companies. The technical support staff accounts for 15 plus 15 percent. The management staff accounts for about 40 percent. And in terms of uh, the education level of employees, 82% uh, of the employees have a bachelor, bachelor's degree. And uh, in terms of age, 50% uh, of the employees are under 30. So that's, that may be a good sign. For, it's a young and dynamic industry. And we also ask questions about the uh, business types. Uh, what is their major? What are their major businesses? So, seven percent of the, com the, the translation and localization services accounts for seventy percent of the total of their total revenue, and interpreting accounts for twenty-two percent. And others accounts for seven uh, percent. And uh, the notable figure is that uh, translations from Chinese into other languages has uh, uh, surpassed translations from uh, into Chinese. So 54% of the uh, translation materials are from Chinese into other languages. I think that's, that has to do with the um, increasing demand for, for information from China. I'm sorry, your sample told me that uh, for this session, maybe the audience would prefer to uh, listen in Chinese, so I can prepare um, all this, all this uh, in English. But basically, we have, uh, in the last two parts, we have analyzed some major problems that we're facing. We give some uh, advices and uh, recommendations. These are mainly for uh, uh, words that we we hope to convey to the government so that we will give more support to the company, uh, to, to, the, to the industry. Uh, so the first uh, problem uh, we identify is that uh, is, uh, we do not have a clearly defined uh, position in the government's, in the standards of uh, uh, we do not have a clearly defined uh, position or status for the language services department. And uh, translation is regarded more as a profession rather than an industry. So we have in China, we have uh, a standard uh, on the classification 
chemical industries. And there are more than 1,000 industries identified, but translation and language services are not among them. And so we feel very sad because uh, even, um, for example, uh, uh, those, uh, those people who do housing, housing work and uh, those who uh, work in the printing industry and uh, even the guards are listed as an industry or sector, but translated, translation are not. So I've been talking with the, uh, the, the, the state administration on statistics and uh, we have uh, proposed to include translation or language services industry uh, as one of them. The second problem is that there is no entry requirement to enter this into this uh, professional industry. We have the CATI exam, but it's not compulsory, as I said. Um, and for translation companies, anyone can register a company, a translation company, with as low as uh, 13,000 yuan, with uh, about 3,000 yuan, Singapore yuan. So, so there are a lot of very small uh, companies in the market. And uh, the third problem is that the, the companies are mostly very small and uh, <coughs> it has not formed a, a uh, and it has limited competitive uh, advantage when they uh, compete with, for example, big companies from abroad. And the fourth problem is that uh, many companies, they do not have a specialized field. They do all kinds of uh, translations, that means they are not specialized. So they are competing, not on quality but on price. So that's, that's why the price level is generally low, very low in China. And the fifth problem is the problem with the translators. So, uh, as I told, although we now have the professional degree courses on translation, it's still in the uh, development stage and uh, the translators, the students, they, uh, the students that graduated from those programs are not, actually, are not yet very well prepared for the industry. Uh, there are many reasons for that. But there is a very great demand for translators and interpreters. So this is a big question. And uh, then we give some uh, suggestions or recommendations. The first is to establish the language services industry as uh, a recognized industry and uh, to provide support, government support, for example, reduction of taxes and uh, encouragement for training opportunities. Uh, some of the software and the information, information technology companies, they enjoy such uh, policies, but translation companies uh, are not are, are excluded from those policies. <coughs> And also, we, uh, we propose to set up a translation law to make translation that accounting law and to make translation a profession that has certain entrance uh, criteria. So not everyone can come to this profession and do translation. Uh, to ask the government to provide more support to the language services industry because it's a emerging and a new and emerging and environmentally friendly industry. And the second uh, suggestion is for the associations. So we have to uh, set up standards, we have to improve. 
improve ourselves. Because uh, as translators, we need to improve our skills. As translation companies, we need to adhere to, the, uh, to certain rules. The third part is to uh, promote the cooperation, collaboration between universities and the translation, uh, the, the language service providers, so that uh, the students graduating from those programs can better uh, serve the industry, serve the market. And the fourth one is to encourage innovation uh, in the industry. Uh, because uh, nowadays, because the, most of the players are small, so the investment in technology is not impressive. So many are still doing it in a very traditional way. So we have, there are a, a few companies that have been investing in uh, technology such as uh, a collaborative cloud-based uh, translation platform. That's how, that is open to all players. But that needs a lot of uh, investment and government support. So that's about, about uh, all. There are a lot of figures in 